In this communications course I have taken over the last 12 weeks, I have developed my own sense of digital literacy. The course has taught me about digital literacy through the understanding of concepts, processes, and theories essential to current and future communication. I began my journey to, as Kevin Kelly would put, becoming screen literate. I have gained knowledge through the use of many apps and resources such as WordPress, Twitter, Site, Pocket, Feedly, and IFTTT. I've also come to understand why it is important to be digitally literate through theorists and authors discussed in class and in readings. In order to become screen literate, I needed to learn to adapt to the change in culture as technology advances. Digital technology not only changes how we communicate, but changes interaction on a personal and professional level as well. From this course, I have learned how to adapt to these changes and work within the new ways of communication, as well as being ready for those in the future. The main project assigned over this course was the WordPress blog. This blog entailed maintaining an interesting, well-planned, and current feed of content that must be updated at least once weekly. I chose to create a blog about Philadelphia food. WordPress provided all the necessary resources to create my, my own blog. I chose to use leavingmq.com and make the title of my blog food. Within WordPress, you can customize the theme, layout, categories, colors, and anything else you can imagine with the use of plugins on your blog. All of these changes can be made through the admin on the dashboard. The admin can also edit posts, pages, and regulate comments. WordPress provides all the tools needed to make a successful and professional blog. With all the tools readily available, the next task became how to achieve that professional blog. The content of what is posted on the blog was really important to me for this assignment. The content needed to be focused on your topic at all times and remain current. In order to keep the attention of the readers, it is necessary to provide something for them something current that they haven't seen or read a million times before. However, standing out from other similar blogs could be a challenge. In order to keep my blog current and interesting, it was important for me to have various sources of inspiration for future topics. This draws back to a theory of Kirby Ferguson's we discussed in class that everything is a remix. Clearly, I will not have been the first to create a Philadelphia food blog. However, it is how I present it in my own way that is crucial. This constantly reminded me that while being inspired by other blogs and articles, it is important for me to remain true to my own blogging identities and ideas. One source of inspiration I used a lot was Zite. Zite is an iPhone app that allows you to explore topics that interest you by only displaying articles in the category so you are only viewing content on that topic. For example, if I were stuck on what to write about for my post next week, I would go on Zite and see what was in the foodies and Philadelphia categories. It also gave me a space where I could explore other foodie-related areas to help grow my understanding for the community I was writing for even further. Pocket is another iPhone app that acts as a Save It For Later service. I used Pocket many times in coordination with Site. Pocket allowed me to save articles that I wanted to read but just didn't have time to at the moment. Articles can be saved from many sources, giving a wide variety of article types. Pocket was also very useful to save inspiration for weeks in case I needed ideas later on. This way, when I was looking for inspiration, I had lists of articles I knew I already liked and could review. From this collection of articles I built over time, I had a lot more options and consideration for topics I posted on my blog. Another app that contributed to my pocket list was Feedly. Feedly, like Zite, allowed me to explore articles but in a more organized way. I chose to follow specific blogs or websites and could view their content separate from one another. Feedly gave me a place to view all of their blogs I shared content in common with. This was specifically helpful because it allowed me to search the exact website I wanted to follow. I followed sources such as Eater Philly, Food Philadelphia, Philly Grub, 22nd and Philly, and Philly Foodie. These are all really popular Philadelphia food blogs that not only gave me ideas, but also kept me in the know within my specific foodie community. With so many apps, it became really important to be able to smoothly use them together to obtain the best results possible. That's where IFTTT came into play. IFTTT helps streamline social media so they all work in collaboration with one another. Creating recipes that IFTTT will fulfill for you to keep all your social media in sync and really professional helps you attain this. A few recipes I set up are building a Twitter list from a specific hashtag, automatically sending a tweet when I posted a new blog, and saving links from tweets I favored to pocket. The recipes 
automatically do what I would need to do manually, therefore saving me a lot of time and performing in a more consistent manner. IFTTT is especially helpful when it comes to Twitter. The organization of my Twitter was significantly changed for the better after I set up these recipes. Connecting Twitter to my blog and resources for my blog made keeping up with all the technology a lot easier to handle. Once everything was connected to Twitter, it acted as a platform for me to get involved in the community and follow other foodies and hopefully get some to follow me back as well. It also helped me be able to promote my blog and share when a new post was up automatically. Being involved in the foodie community by following, retweeting, or favoriting other food pages also helped me adjust to blogging much more quickly and encouraged me to get involved in my foodie community. In this community, I experienced the theory of Howard Rheingold that participation is power firsthand. These communities are rapidly expanding where people share ideas and interact with one another in new ways such as favoriting and retweeting. Knowing how to properly act within these spaces is key to evolving with our digital world and getting involved in these new communities. The use of all these tools overall really helped me improve and develop my own digital literacy. Before taking this course, I had not heard of any of these tools, concepts, or theories, and from learning and using them, my original idea of how people communicate has significantly changed. After taking this course, I now understand that it is so important to, to be digitally literate so I can efficiently communicate with others as forms of communication constantly evolve. Understanding how to be digitally literate will help me evolve with the constantly change of changing forms of communication and be able to efficiently follow this evolution. The biggest concept this course has taught me is that being digitally literate is necessary to function in our now digitally focused world.